Prayer and Fasting 2024. I have a fasting book called Fast Forward to accelerate your spiritual life. It's a 21-day devotional. We're going to drop this in the comments for you to check it out. We also have a reading plan called Fast Forward 21-day reading plan on your version Bible app that you can read together with other believers and there's some calls to action and other things. We'll be, we'll be posting next 21 days about fasting and also posting some health things health benefits and what happens to your body as you fast. So both spiritual things and physical things. But let's dive in. The Beginner's Guide to Fasting. So if you don't know anything about fasting, this video, this live stream right now will give you the basic tools you need to start fasting. If you're not sure if you should be, this will give you the tools that you need to dive in to this biblical discipline. Number one, is fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. It's not starvation or an involuntary absence of food. Fasting on the other hand is a voluntarily abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. So it's not something you're being forced by someone. It's not done by compulsion. Somebody is making you do that. You do it as a volunteer. You volunteer to stay away from food for spiritual reasons. It's not famine. During famine, you are forced not to eat because there's no food. During fasting, you choose to abstain from food for spiritual reasons. Fasting is not a hunger strike, nor is it a diet. A diet focuses on helping you to lose weight. Fasting draws you closer to God. Now we can fast for different reasons, to overcome problems in life, to restore hunger for God, to get passion for the Lord. Fasting helps us to fulfill God's calling in our life as well as to subdue our fleshly desires with all its conflicts. So let's recap. Drop this in the chat. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. It's not abstaining from food for being pushed, being manipulated or being forced. Nor is it for physical reasons. Now the benefits of fasting are physical as well. But the reason for fasting is not physical, it's spiritual. Spiritual reason is the purpose of fasting. The second thing that we wanted to highlight right now is biblical types of fast. There is really two biblical types of fast. I will mention actually five, but the first two is what Bible mentions. The first type of fasting is called the absolute fast or sometimes they call it the dry fast. This is the fast where you go without food and without water. Now Moses went on this fast for 40 days. It was actually a supernatural fast. Do not try that at home. City of Nineveh fasted like this for three full days. Jonah chapter 3 verse 7. As well as Apostle Paul fasted like this after his first encounter with the Lord. Acts chapter 9 verse 9. Caution, this should not be undertaken for more than three days and it should be only done if you have a clear directive from the Lord and are in good health. So the dry fast where you don't drink and don't eat and it's mentioned in the Bible. Again, it's not a rule for us nor is it advised or recommended but it, it is mentioned in the Bible. The second type of fasting mentioned in the Bible is what we call it the normal fast. It's when you don't eat but you only drink water. And this is the fast that most of us are doing during this fasting time, during this fasting season. It's when you don't eat food but you only drink water. And in fact, it's the most consistent fast with a biblical definition of fast. Because fasting is not eating but you can still drink. So people who fast and they eat, it's technically and biblically not a fast. It's a discipline, consecration, abstaining from something but biblically speaking, fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. Now we believe that Jesus went on this type of a fast for 40 days. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil and in those days the Bible says he ate nothing and afterward when they had ended he was hungry. The Bible says that he ate nothing but it doesn't mention he did not drink anything. 
Usually if a person in the Bible did not drink anything during the fast, the scripture would point that out. So based on that, we can go on the limp to say that Jesus most likely did the normal fast where he did not eat but he still drank some water or some liquids. The third type of fast, this one is not necessarily mentioned in the Bible as a fast. This is more of added by believers around the world and this is mostly the fast that many people will do, especially in the Western countries. This is the partial fast. So the first one is the dry fast, the second one is the normal fast, the third one is the partial fast. The partial fast is commonly referred to as the Daniel's fast. It's when you abstain from certain foods. It's another type of fast that people refer to, Daniel chapter 10 verse 3. This fast, and again, I don't like to call it a fast because technically and biblically it's not a fast, but for the sake of the fact that it's been commonly culturally embraced like that, I'm going to go ahead and still call it a fast. This fast usually includes eating no meat, no sweets, no dairy, and no other pleasant foods, only soups, fruits, and vegetables. For me personally, this is the hardest fast because I don't think I've ever done more than seven days of this because I don't like fasting and thinking about food at the same time. Plus, it refrains from eating an entire meal. You still feel hungry and for me, it's a very big challenge. So personally, I don't remember last time that I ever did the partial fast like that. This does not mean that if that's the route you are taking, that the Lord is not going to honor that and the Lord is not going to meet you at the point of your need. But it is not biblically outlined as a fast. The fourth um, fast, more of a consecration, I call it non-food fast. It's when you abstain from certain pleasant things, activities, entertainment, gratifying pleasures other than food. This is specifically for those with medical condition that the non-food fast is the safest way to practice the spiritual discipline. Daniel didn't just avoid pleasant foods and meats, he didn't also anoint himself either. And so we see that in Daniel chapter 10 verse 3, Paul talked about abstaining from sex for a time to give yourself to fasting, 1 Corinthians 7, 4. Though that's not a rule or a requirement, non-food fast could be a good one for people who want to, during this season, consecrate themselves, but they're not able to do it by giving up food. And then the fifth type of fast is the corporate fast. It's when you do a fast together with other believers. Your private fasting should be done in secret as Jesus instructed it in Matthew 6:16, 6, But there's also a public fast which can be proclaimed by leaders as this fast is called a corporate fast. We can see a few biblical examples as a prophet Samuel who called entire nation to fast, 1 Samuel chapter 7, verse 6. Esther called her Jewish people to fast, Esther chapter 4, verse 16. Ezra proclaimed a fast, Ezra chapter 8 verses 21 through 23. A pagan king of Nineveh declared a fast for his nation, Jonah chapter 3 verse 5. The disciples fasted and ministered to the Lord, Acts chapter 13 verses 2 and 3. And finally, we are to examine our hearts so that we practice period of fastings to be noticed by the Lord, not by men. So let's review this again. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. It's not a diet. It's not a hunger strike. And it's not for physical reasons, though we experience physical benefits. We see two biblical types of fastings, absolute fast or a dry fast, and a normal fast. Absolute fast, no water, no food. A normal fast is you don't eat, but you can drink water. There's also we add to that a partial fast where you abstain from certain foods, commonly known as Daniel's fast, non-food fast, specifically for people who cannot fast food but they want to practice some sort of self-denial. And a corporate fast, it's when we fast together as a church 
in the beginning of the year, in the beginning of the month, as a community. The goal is not to draw attention to ourselves. The goal is as a community to draw attention to the Lord. Amen. If you are participating in this fast forward challenge, would you drop number one in the chat right now? If you are on the day one of this fast forward challenge, drop number one in the chat as well. Now, as we're talking about the beginner's guide of fasting, let's look at some of the things of how to fast. So we mentioned what is a fast, we mentioned different types of fastings, and now let's mention how to fast. No matter what type of a fast you begin, you must have a specific goal. Be specific. Why are you fasting? Do you need direction in your life's decisions, healing, restoration of your marriage, family issues or wisdom? Are you facing financial difficulties? Ask the Holy Spirit for guidance. Decide what to fast for and present it constantly to God in prayer. Is it okay to fast without having a specific need or a specific goal? Yes, you can simply fast to seek the Lord, be closer to Jesus. But it does help when you enter into a fast and you have a specific goal. When you choose how long you're going to fast, what type of fast you're going to do. Make a goal. Ask the Lord, what would you want me to fast for? And write that goal down as part of your prayer request. Now, the benefit that you have, those of you who are part of our fasting community on Telegram, is every day at around 8 p.m. Pacific time, the time of where I am at, we will let you know some prayer points to be conscious of for the next day. These are not necessarily you have to follow them, but gives you a blueprint. The first week of fasting, we're going to focus fasting about us, our family and our friends. The second week, we're going to be fasting for our church and our ministry. And the third week of fasting, we're going to be fasting and praying for our world, our city, our region. So this week, the first week is going to be focused more on us, our friends and family. Second week is going to be focused on the church and ministry. And the third week is going to be focused on the world. And each day we will give you some basic prayer points of how to fast. So how to fast, have a specific goal. Secondly, when it comes to how to fast, the type of fasting you choose is up to you and the Lord. Please hear me loud and clear. I am not here to tell anyone what type of fast you should do. Now, what I do is between me and the Lord. What you do is between you and the Lord. You can go on a full fast in which you only drink liquids. You may desire to fast like Daniel, abstain from sweets and meats and only have liquids like water. Pay attention to what the Holy Spirit leads you to do and then endeavor to do that. After you decide how long you're going to fast, remember, you can fast as long as you like as the Lord leads you. Be courteous enough to inform those who prepare your meals about your plans to fast. Most people can easily fast from one to three days, but you may feel God's grace to go longer even as much as 21 to 40 days. Use wisdom and pray for guidance. Beginners are advised to start slowly. I know people that reached out to me during this season and said, Vlad, you know, I'm joining you for 21 days, but we haven't started yet. The Lord already put on my heart to go for 40 day fast. And God bless them. I had a lady today because our church opens at four o'clock now for prayer. And the lady comes to me and she says, I've been here, Pastor, I've been here since 4 a.m. I'm planning to eat one meal in the evening. Is, is that okay? Can I have your permission? And I said, ma'am, you don't need my permission. This is between you and the Lord. Whatever you decide in your heart, God sees that and God will honor that. Whether you eat one meal a day or whether you um, go all the way 21 days, um, that is not my job to tell you what you should fast. My job is to teach you about the discipline of fasting and the Holy Spirit guides each one of us. I can tell you that majority of us are doing a 21-day um, liquid fast or water fast. 
Um, but this doesn't have to be your portion. Whatever you do, make sure you spend a lot of time in prayer and make sure that you do something that is sacrificial and God will honor you if you follow His leading. When it comes to fasting, I mentioned you must have a goal. The type of fasting you choose is up to you and the Lord. The third thing about how to fast is when you fast, your body detoxifies and eliminates toxins from your system. This may cause mild discomfort such as headaches and irritability during withdrawal from caffeine and sugars. And naturally, you will, lose, you will have hunger pains. Hunger is a common side effect of any fast. Avoiding water can make you feel hungrier since water helps to increase satiety. If you don't eat food or drink water, your body begins to crave fuel. You'll most likely be fatigued, dizzy and weak. In fact, David said during his fasting the following, let me read to you, my knees are weak through fasting and my flesh is feeble from lack of fatness. Uh, Psalm 103 verse 24. One of the things we do often during fasting, one of the things we experience is we become irritable. Also, as hunger builds up, you are bound to feel cranky. Mood swings are pretty common. Also, when you are tired and hungry, it can be difficult to concentrate on work or school. So limit your activity, use good common sense, and exercise physically in moderation. Take time to rest and understand your body is going through detox as it eliminates toxins from your system. The third thing that I want to, the fourth thing I want to highlight on how to fast is remember the fasting brings miraculous results. You are following Jesus' example when you fast. Spend time listening to praise and worship music. Read and meditate often on the Word. Let the hunger pangs remind you, let the hunger pain remind you to stop everything and pray. Pray as often you can, as you can throughout the day. Get away from the normal distractions as much as possible and keep your heart and mind set on seeking God's face. There will be a miraculous things taking place. But turn your hunger, physical hunger, to fuel your spiritual hunger for God. And lastly, when it comes to how to fast, make a decision right away that you will end the fast slowly. Of course, it depends on how long you're going to fast. But even if it's just one day of fasting, then usually there is no harm in resuming normal eating. But if you go for more than three days, you will begin to eat solid food gradually. Eat small portions or snacks. When the time comes to end your fast, eating solid foods too soon or even overeating is extremely dangerous to your digestive system. And a lot of times it exposes a gluttony. And I will be the first one to say I have failed in this area more than I can count. Because in this area I have, one time we did a seven day fast and I ate 12 cinnamon, 12 or 16 cinnamon rolls, okay. They felt so good, they smelled so good. Then I spent an hour in the bathroom repenting and beating my chest like that sinner in the temple and asking God to have mercy on my soul and save me from death. Thankfully, I did not die. I know people who end up in emergencies when they ate a little bit of meat after a 30-day fast or a 40-day fast, just a little bit, and end up in ER. I heard of stories, I don't know them personally, of people who died after doing a 40-day water fast and then eating chicken. And so I just wanted you to be mentally right away prepared that things need to be, we gradually enter the fast, we also gradually exit the fast.
So why would you want to fast? So what is a fast? We mentioned that is physical abstaining from food for spiritual reasons, abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. The types of fasting, absolute or dry fast, normal fast, partial fast, non-food fast, and a corporate fast. How to fast? Have a specific goal. The type of fasting you choose is between you and the Lord. When you fast, your body is going through detox. It eliminates toxins from your system. So just be patient. And there will be miraculous results taking place in your life. And right away, make a decision to end the fast when the time will come to end it slowly. Now, something I want to highlight before I mention about why fasting, and that is if you fail during fasting, resume it. Sometimes, you know, you start a fast and then, you know, two, three days later, get discouraged and just, you know, go and eat a little bit. Um, don't quit the fast. Resume the fast. And so go all the way for 21 days. Even if you tripped or you relapsed or, or you fell, um, just it's not a sin. Uh, eating food is not sin. Um, but if you kind of feel like, man, I kind of made that decision and I, I didn't live up to my own um, standard, it's okay. Just resume it. Restart it again. And don't be afraid to fail. <laughs> Fall forward as you fast forward. Woo! Come on, somebody. Drop this in the chat. Fall forward as you fast forward. That means if you fell during fasting, don't quit. Just resume. No guilt and shame or condemnation. This doesn't give us, you know, green light to sleep with, uh, with chips and uh, with some little snacks on the side. But it just gives us grace. That this is a discipline. We are in training. We're not trying to finish the fast. We are training ourselves in godliness. Denying ourselves to follow Jesus more. It's not about what we're denying. It's what we're pursuing. It's not about what we are giving up. It's what we are gaining. It's not about what we are losing. It's what we are after. And we are after Jesus. That's why it's less about fasting and more about prayer. This kind doesn't leave except by prayer and fasting. Now, why should someone fast? I will give you personally my four reasons. The first reason is that fasting helps you to overcome calamities of life. Fasting is the biblical way to humble ourselves, according to Psalm 35, 13 and Psalm 69, 10. Esther fasted when faced with danger, Esther 4, 16. Ezra fasted for protection, Ezra 8, 21 through 28. Jehoshaphat fasted in the time of invasion of the confederate armies of the Canaanites and Syrians. 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 3. All these people faced big problems in life and they fasted. Something about you humbling yourselves before, yourself before God and say, God, whatever I am facing is bigger than me. Whatever I am fighting, I can't win on my own. I need your help. What my children are facing, I can't solve. The sickness raging in my body, the doctors can't cure. And so I'm throwing myself at your mercy. And I am declining, denying food for a season and saying, God, have mercy on me. Extend the scepter of your compassion and have compassion on me. And when you do that, it's not the fact that you're not eating. It's the fact of what it represents, the sacrifice that it represents. God is moved by faith. God is moved by that. Jesus made it very clear, the Father will see you fasting and reward you publicly. And so the first reason for fasting is it helps you to overcome the calamities of life. The second purpose of fasting is it renews our connection to God. 
drop this in the chat. Fasting helps us to overcome the calamities of life. Secondly, fasting renews our connection to God. Jesus said that his disciples will fast when he is gone. Mark chapter 2 verse 20. When we fast, we get our hunger back for the presence of God. Something happens. Jesus left heaven. He's not with us physically. And he said when that will happen, we will fast. You know, sadly, Jesus went to heaven. Many Christians do not fast. That fasting restores our hunger for the first love, for the presence of Jesus. Through the Holy Spirit, we begin to feel the nearness of Jesus again. If you lost your passion, if you lost that connection, begin to fast. If you lost that intimacy, begin to fast. If you lost that fire, begin to fast. So that's the second reason for fasting, my favorite reason. The third reason for fasting is that fasting empowers us to fulfill God's calling in our life. Interestingly, while most of the people in the Old Testament fasted in a crisis, Jesus fasted for His calling. We should not fast only during problems, but also for our purpose. Anna, she spent time fasting for the coming of the redemption of Israel. Luke chapter 2, verse 37. Don't just focus on crisis, but you have a calling to fulfill. Maybe some of you are saying, I don't need to fast. My life is fine. Yes, but have you reached your calling? Have you fulfilled what God created you for? Are you breaking through into the new levels, conquering new territories for God in the area of your purpose? If the answer is no, maybe fasting could be a good opportunity to begin to press into that. We don't need to fast only because we're, we have problems. We've got to fast because we want to know and have more of the presence of God. And we also want to fast because we want to reach the purpose that God has for us. Lastly, fasting helps us to defeat the devil. Once the disciples of Jesus could not cast out a demon, and Jesus said, this kind does not leave, but by prayer and fasting. Now, some people would argue this relates, that this kind relates to unbelief, then to deliverance. But one thing we do know is that fasting helps us to break the bonds of wickedness, undo heavy burdens, and empowers us to break every yoke, according to Isaiah 58, 6. When we fast, we have to release people from bondage. We have to help people, but also there is a symbolic principle. When you fast, you begin to gain mastery over your appetites. Your flesh becomes crucified. Now, fasting is not the only thing that crucifies the flesh, but it definitely deals it a deadly blow. And then we can walk in greater victory over our flesh. Amen. So as we're stepping into this season of prayer and fasting, beginner's guide to fasting. Fasting is abstaining from food for spiritual reasons. There's a dry fast, no food, no water. A normal fast, no food. Then there's also partial fast, either from morning to evening you're fasting or like Daniel, particular foods. There's non-food fast and then there's the culprit fast. How to fast? You set a goal. What you fast, how long you fast is between you and the Lord. Remember, your body will go through detox. So just be patient. And how you end the fast is as important as how you fast. Why we fast? To conquer calamities of life. Renew our connection to the Lord. Fulfill God's calling in our life. And to defeat the flesh and the appetites of the carnal nature. So that is beginner's guide to fasting. Was this helpful for anybody? If it was, drop number one in the chat. We have about 4,000 people that are live right now. So I do see a lot of people are tuning in from everywhere 
and joining us. I do want to remind you that I have a fast forward book. It's a devotional for 21 days that gives you a little bit of devotions, a little bit of scriptures, prayers, and also some health tips. You can get that on my store, uh, Vlad Subcheck, or you can get that on Amazon or download it on my website, pastorvlad.org. Uh, if you go to pastorvlad.org, you can download it there as well. We are part of a Telegram community right now where we are praying together each day and fasting together each day. You can join that community as well so you can be connected to our prayer and fasting community. Now, if this teaching and this ministry has been a blessing to you, I want to invite you right now this year to make a decision not only to pray and to fast, but also to become a partner with the ministry. It doesn't have to be my ministry. It could be someone else's ministry. But I want to invite you to monthly partner with our ministry. So into this fast that we are doing today, um, we offer books for free. We offer all of our courses for free. All of the things that we do, people have the opportunity to join without a pay. And we will continue to do that. We give books to other nations to be printed, to be given to leaders, send our books to prisons and others. So we have a very powerful, amazing and large team that releases content that reaches the world every single day. And our number one goal is to help you fall in love with Jesus more. Our goal isn't to build our ministry bigger. It's to build you better is to build you closer to Jesus. And we do that through digital material, through the trips that I do, the books that we write, the courses that we make, the videos that we produce, the podcasts that we make. And we're able to do that because of your contribution. So if you're going to make some resolutions this year, would you consider prayerfully not only to pray and fast, but would you partner for this year with this ministry so we can accomplish great things for God? I want to take a moment right now and pray that God will draw us into this fast. Would you drop a prayer emoji in the chat? Let's ask the Holy Spirit to draw us near. It's one thing for you to hear, oh Vlad is calling people into a fast. It's one thing to hear your pastor say, hey church, we got to fast, we got to pray. But it's another thing when it's the Holy Spirit speaks to you when He draws you near and you say yes. Where He leads, where He guides, He moves powerfully. He changes things, transforms things. So I want us to take the moment right now and pray. Father God, I thank You for this day. I thank You as we begin this 21-day Fast Forward Challenge. As people that are watching this, re-watching, listening, and re-listening this. I ask you, Holy Spirit, that the truth will set people free. I ask you that you will draw men to yourself. Lord, I ask you in the name of Jesus that you will draw everyone to you. Lord, our desire is not to point to us, but to point to you. Lord Jesus, we humbly come before you. We draw near to you today. And I ask you, would you, would you draw us to you? We don't want to do this in our own strength, so we rely on yours. We depend on your strength. I ask you, Holy Spirit, for those people that have never fasted. And this is the first time something inside cries out for more. There's a deep dissatisfaction with the status quo. Deep dissatisfaction with lethargic, empty, shallow, superficial, walk that they have had for many years. May you resuscitate them back to spiritual vitality. May you revive them. May you move powerfully in their life. Holy Spirit, draw us near to Jesus. Draw us near to the Father. As we walk into fasting, we bow our head in humility. We bow our head and we say, help us. To love Jesus more. 
Help us to love God's word more. Help us, Lord. We depend on you. We rely on you. And we need you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless every person that's taking part in this fast. And I pray that you will draw them near. I pray that you will revive their prayer life. I pray that you will meet them at the point of their need. Dear Jesus, may revival happen in their life. May problems that they come with into this fast be the problems that they see breakthrough in after this fast. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Um, dear ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us today. We will continue to do this every day. So I'm going to see you again tomorrow at this same time. So I will see you on Telegram tonight where we will drop new prayer points and then we'll see you again tomorrow. So each day we're going to spend some time, five days a week. And so I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart to everyone that's donating, everyone that's partnering and everyone that's giving through YouTube, but mainly through the website Cash App Venmo. PayPal, we appreciate you, we love you, and I believe that this will be our best year spiritually because we're putting Jesus first and we're humbling ourselves. We're not blowing a trumpet, hey, look at us, we're fasting and praying. No, we're humbling ourselves and saying, Jesus, help us, Jesus, draw us near, and the Lord honors that, and the Lord will meet us at the point of our need. Amen. God bless you guys, and I will see you again tomorrow.